it's finally time to leave Tucson. Goodbye, Arizona. Hello, other part of Arizona. And it's Yerba time. It's always Yerba time. Guayaki, please sponsor me. I thought since today is Columbus Day that there would be no five o'clock traffic. Um, that was incorrect, actually. There is a lot of traffic. I think it's a little bit funny that we are celebrating this guy in a country that he didn't even know he was at. Like, he thought he was in India. He didn't even know he was here. And we're like throwing this whole day celebration for him. What the heck? I should be in queue in like an hour, I think. I, I have no idea where I'm at. I really thought this was gonna be a straight shot, no traffic, but um, I was wrong. I was not correct. Thanks, Christopher Columbus. You went to fake India, and now I have to sit in rush hour traffic. What you gonna do when everybody's insane? When I was in the woods, I was living up there trying to escape the trauma that had happened in the desert. And I started hearing like a rustling sound in my van. And at first I was thinking like, oh, maybe the woods are haunted. And I was okay with that. Like, I wasn't scared or anything. I was pretty lonely at the time. So I was like, it'd actually be nice to make a ghost friend. But then I noticed it sounded like wind was blowing inside of my van. So then I was like, maybe my van is haunted. Which is totally a possibility because my van is like over 30 years old. Like that's a pretty old age. So I was like, well, maybe the ghost actually has been living in my van this whole time. I just kept hearing more noise, more and more noise. I heard bags rustling and stuff and I was like, what the hell? Like, there's no way a ghost is going through my trash. So I shined my flashlight just like in my van. I was in bed with all the lights off, I was about to go to sleep. And I see a freaking mouse on my fridge. I was like, what the? You're not a ghost. So as soon as I like scream, it runs away back, I guess up into my dash, how it got in. And I was really in for it that night. Like not only did that mouse in but I told the whole family about my van so I just moved the whole family in and the whole entire night I was just talking to mice and like trying to get them to leave and they wouldn't leave and they were super conservative and they kept like lecturing me on the constitution and I was like can you guys please stop they were like do you want to get matching 1776 tattoos and I was like no I don't even have any tattoos like why would I want that to be my first tattoo and they were like well we'll pay for it and I was like you guys won't even offer to split groceries with me like no and then that was that I've been thinking about free willy a lot I made it to Quartzsite. <laughs> so, I've officially made it to Quartzsite and this is gonna be my home for the winter. I've basically just been hanging out with my desert parents every day, going for drives, talking, eating, bug swatting. It feels so good to finally be here. The energy is really zen which is a drastic contrast from the feeling i was feeling a few weeks ago so to pick up where i last left off i had a very creepy encounter in the desert to say the least after that encounter i had really bad sleep anxiety and i didn't want to be around other people because it made me nervous which i know sounds counterintuitive but that's the way i was feeling at the time i felt very anxious sleeping in public places so 
I went to sleep alone in the woods. And the second night I was there, my van became infested with mice. There is a fucking mouse inside of my van. I don't know what to do. Bro, what the f Okay, I'm pretty sure the mouse is in my trash bag. I'm gonna go hang this bag on the tree. So either there was a different one in my trash bag or there just wasn't any in the trash bag but there's definitely still one in here and I can hear it. Oh my god, I just saw it. Bro, 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 bro. It's now past midnight. I've tried everything to keep the mice out. I have doused my entire van in peppermint oil and they don't care about that at all. They're still running around. I can't even breathe in here. That's how much peppermint oil is in here and they don't care at all. I turned all the lights on that I had and shined them at where they're coming in. That doesn't deter them. So I finally just got up and took all of my rugs and shoved them up under the driver and passenger seat feet area honestly i'm not that confident in it because mice are mice and they find their way in but this is like my last resort i don't know if i'm gonna get sleep at all tonight so this is my mouse barricade and i have the lights on and those are stuffed i guess we'll see so last night was hell there wasn't just one mouse there was a bunch of mice running just all through my van i thought that i had them contained to the cab area nope I was finally falling asleep and I heard one under my bed. I didn't sleep a wink. That's how that went. So I wasn't getting any peace in the desert. I wasn't getting any peace in the woods. It was probably the worst week of sleep in my entire life. And then the cherry on top of that week, after I came down the mountain and got the mice out of my van, I got sick. I don't know if I'm ever gonna post this, but I checked myself into a hotel because I started feeling extremely hot, extremely overwhelmed, and extremely confused. That's the part that made me feel like I should probably stay somewhere that's not my van because I was just having a lot of confusion. I was extremely emotional. I was crying for like a day straight. I didn't know why. So I was like, let me check myself into a hotel. The next day, I was feeling I feel like I'm scared. Is this side of my face moving? For real, is it moving? Oh my god, wait a minute. Wait. Okay, I'm getting scared. It seems like the right side of my face is not moving. Is that just me? Maybe it is. Okay. <laughs> I was really hot. My body was aching. I called my brother. My brother called me, actually, because he, I guess, hadn't heard from me in a few days or something. I wasn't texting anybody. I was just really... I was just really out of it. So he said it sounded like I maybe had the flu, like I probably had a fever and my brain was cooking itself. So he was like, take some Tylenol and go get seen. And I was like, no, I don't even know where I'm at. I don't want to drive. <laughs> um, and this happened like an hour or two ago. I guess I'm just like kind of dying here in this hotel room. So this morning I checked out of the hotel and I went straight to urgent care just to make sure, you know, I'm not dying she gave me antibiotics and i think steroids and i do feel like poopy so i decided to check back into the hotel for a night or two um just because with having a fever and stuff i don't really want to be laying in my van and making it worse so i guess this is my birthday present to myself this month the only thing is these antibiotics are horse pills it's this amoxicillin and i don't think i can swallow it I hate swallowing pills, so I'm gonna attempt to chew it right now. I'm sure it's gonna be disgusting, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try it. We're just gonna see what happens. I have the water that I'm gonna try it with, but I also have orange juice, so I can have something to wash it down if it's disgusting. I'm sure it's gonna be disgusting, but I don't know if I can swallow it. Should I try to swallow it first? What if I'm like live recording? I'm choking. What if this adds pressure? This is pretty big. It looks small, but it's big.
I think I could have swallowed that, but now I have to chew it because the coating's gone. And I definitely cannot swallow a pill if the coating's gone. My mouth just is like, no. Oh, it smells horrible. Oh God. Oh God. Didn't the inventor of this find it on like mold or something? Cause that's what it smells like. It's going pretty fast. You're so lucky you cannot smell the smell right now. I'm scared. Pretend it's Fear Factor and you're getting a million dollars. You know what? Next time I'm just swallowing it. Hmm. It wasn't that bad. That wasn't actually not bad at all. I didn't even the sugar, but that really wasn't bad. Evidently, fear is on a factor for me. Mm -hmm. I will do that again in a few hours. Thankfully, I got over the sickness fairly quickly. It took about a week and then I could finally head out here. I'm with my family and it's safe and it's quiet and it's honestly beautiful. Dinner time? Okay, coming. Last night, I was laying in my van with all the doors wide open and all I could see was an infinite sky and vast, vast desert lined with mountains as far as the eye could see. It was so beautiful that it honestly brought me to tears. Looking into the sky like that with no obstructions whatsoever, there's no buildings, no nothing, the stars are so bright it feels like you're being swallowed into the universe. You feel small in a good way. I was laying there thinking about how lucky I am to be here. Not just surviving that encounter, but in general. A lot of scary stuff has happened to me on the road. Even scarier than the last video, if you can believe it. But it happened before I had a YouTube channel and I didn't film everything and I didn't have an audience to share it with. So I experienced it all alone. And someone commented on my last video, it would be very hard to accurately describe this if you hadn't got it on video. And that's true. It's hard to describe experiences like that unless you record them. So if you're not filming, your experience is solely yours. And that can feel isolating, depressing. After that happened a few weeks ago, my immediate reaction was to shut down. I didn't want to talk to anybody about it. I didn't want to share it. I was just really disappointed that it had happened. I mean, I wasn't even going to make the video on it, but I knew that I had a responsibility to post it. So I did. After a week break, I got to editing and I uploaded the video. But now through going through that process, watching it over and over again to edit it, upload it, video's going kind of viral, so I get comments about it literally every second. It's kind of like I'm reliving it for the second time, which sucks. I'm very grateful for all of my beautiful new subscribers and that I could bring awareness to that situation, but as of now, I'm, I'm, I'm putting that away. That experience happened and it's time to move on. And it's so easy for people to say what they would have or would not have done in that situation, but the truth is you don't know how you're gonna react in a situation like that until you're actually there. I'm proud of myself for how I handled that. I'm alive and the situation didn't escalate. It's good for me and that's good for him. My final piece on the situation is don't live in fear. There's a fine line between being cautious and being so scared that you never actually get to experience real life. You're gonna experience scary situations no matter what you do. Anyway, <laughs> that's all for this video. I'm really enjoying my time here. I have to go eat dinner right now, actually. I'm late. It's really, really, really hot. It's still in the 90s, but hopefully it cools down soon. And uh, I'm excited to be at my new home and I'll see you next week. Until next time, y'all. Post wonderful dinner, we have Lori and Dave. He was doing dishes after he cooked us some wonderful hamburgers. And this is my camp in Quartzsite. 